Our story begins with the protagonist named Jibong Kim working at his part-time job at the convenience store. And there he was scanning the items with the barcode scanner. He scanned the item and gave it to the buyer, telling him the price of that item. Kim asked 40 yuan for that item, and the buyer clanked the coins before him on the counter. The buyer takes his stuff from there and turns to leave while Kim stands there on the counter greets him and asks him to come again to the store. However, Kim is a 20-year-old college student and a part-time worker who's happily enjoying an ordinary life. Kim thinking about his life's current situation makes a bored face telling himself that he is not happy with his life. Then he sits down on the ground to collect the coins. While collecting the coins he asks himself how could anyone enjoy a life like this. After some time, he stands inside the store looking out of the glass window thinking it's always the same old routine and the same old views. Then he sighed thinking it was boring. Standing there in the store he made a bored face because he was tired of his daily routine. As he stood near the window his phone rang and it was a message notification. He picked up his phone from the counter to check and there was a message from his mother. His mother asked him what is he doing. He replied that he was on his shift at the store. Then he asked his mother did she wanted to tell him something his mother replied. She just noticed that it was his payday today and then she asked him to bring some fried chicken in return. Kim stood there reading the message and smiled thinking he guessed today was his payday and his mother was more aware of it than he was. Kim replies all right he got it. Furthermore, he says he will buy one marinated and one regular fried on his way back. As he sends this message his mother replies make it the soy sauce one over the regular fried one for her son and in reply, Kim sends his mother the hot mouth emoji. As he was chatting with his mother suddenly, he heard a loud noise outside. Hearing this noise, he got scared and his phone slipped from his hand. After this, he holding his phone looks outside asking himself what is why suddenly this noise occurred. He ran toward the door to check what was happening outside. He opened the store door to check thinking that sounded like some kind of explosion. As he stood there at the door, he was shocked to see the huge monster destroying the city. Sees that destruction everywhere he runs toward the road, and he gets scared to see that the monster has destroyed almost the whole city with fire. Kim stands there, looks up toward the monsters and the destroyed buildings, and asks himself what is going on. Then he surprisingly asks himself if is he dreaming looking all around. He says no this is definitely all real. However, Kim nervously stands there on the road. He feels some noise behind him. He turns to look and is shocked to see the huge monsters coming toward him. He gets scared and thinks the first thing that comes to his mind is to run away from this place. Therefore, Kim screeches his shoes on the road and runs away from there, while thinking his mind is all muddled up and what is going on where the monsters come from. While running away, Kim falters and thud on the road and he gets injured. Lying there injured on the road, he heads up to look and then he looks behind him thinking he tripped over something that was not a very cud time to do. Lying there on the road, as soon as he looked back, he was shocked to see his legs were no longer attached to his body. Sees this, he gets scared and asks himself, why are his legs over there? Then he coughs and the blood spurts out of his mouth and he plops on the road. Lying there injured on the road, he turns his head to look as the huge monster stands behind him, shaking its tentacles, and the bright purple aura was emerging from its tentacles. Kim looks toward the tentacle with his blood on it, and asks himself, did it get him with those tentacles? On org as the blood was flowing from Kim's mouth and his body was sliced seeing this, he abused then thudded on the road. After some time, the sound of a ring occurred, and he got the notification window that the system's new announcement activating humanity's awakening program. Then another window occurs on which it was written they are initiating the awakening trial. Hearing that robotic voice, he heads up asking himself, what then his head thuds on the road again and lying there, and the bright light started emerging as he lay there unconscious on the road. After some time, he thuds into the holographic room. Then he presses his head and back which thud on the ground. He heads up asking himself where he is, but as soon as his eyes fall on the legs that are now attached to his body, he starts shuddering asking himself if his legs are reattached to his body and his injuries are gone. Kim sat there in the holographic room thinking the series of incomprehensible events completely blocked his mind. After this, he gets up and gets the notification window that greets players welcome to the awakening zone. Standing there, he turned his head and surprisingly looked up asking what was that voice right now. Furthermore, he 
He asked himself what it said in the awakening zone, then he looked around and asked what this holographic room was. He was completely blanked and scared because he didn't know where he was right now, what was happening to him, and what had happened to his body. However, Kim gets the notification window that initiates the awakening trial generating a monster opponent. As he stood there suddenly a huge monster appeared at his back. The monster created a loud noise Kim turned his head to look. As soon as he looks back, he gets another notification window that Quest successfully strikes an attack on the test monster, and if he upon a successful strike the monster will perish regardless of the amount of damage inflicted. Hearing this notification fearfully asks what is he saying he wants him to land an attack on this monster. The monster angrily looks toward Kim and then extends its claw toward him to attack. Sees the monster's claw coming toward him, he gets scared. As he was about to fall backward because the monster's claw was huge. And when the monster swung its claw, the strong gust of wind blew and Kim puts his hands in front of his face, fearfully thinking he is going to die. However, the monster put its claw on Kim and crashed him so hard on the ground that the dust smoke spread there. Therefore, the notification window appears that he has failed the awakening trail and then another notification window appears that they are regenerating the player's body. However, Kim's body regenerated, and he stood there looking at his hands and body in amazement. Suddenly, his eyes fall on the nearby blood and Kim gets scared and starts shuddering then asks himself what is he. Then he fearfully looked toward the cut hand lying on the ground which was wholly covered with blood. Sees the hand he fearfully thought that it was his hand. Seeing the blood and mutilated body parts there, he feels nauseous and stands there. He starts vomiting. While vomiting, he sat there thinking about regenerating. But it couldn't be meanwhile, the monster moved toward him to attack. Sees the huge monster coming toward him Kim with teary eyes, looks up toward the monster, and starts shuddering. However, Kim starts trembling while saliva starts coming out of his mouth the monster roars, and he quickly gets up and starts running away. But this time the monster slashes its tentacles, and cuts off Kim's head, and separates it from his body. Kim's head and body thud on the floor while lying there he sobs, and the tears flow from his eyes, and he coughs with his sliced head. However, the notification window appears that he has failed the awakening trial, and they would regenerate the player's body. After this, Kim's body regenerates, and he stands there surprisingly looking toward himself. As he stands there, the quest window appears. That quest window was about successfully striking an attack on the test monster, and upon a successful strike the monster will perish regardless of the amount of damage inflicted. However, he gets scared to see the monster appear there, and move toward him to attack. Seeing the monster coming toward him, he shouts asking himself, what is this what is he supposed to do, and how can he ever kill a monster like that? As the monster steps toward him, Kim fearfully steps backwards. Suddenly, the notification window appears that he can't kill the monster. Then another notification window appears that the test monster is programmed to be a transcendent tier creature, his chances of killing them are zero. Kim stands there surprisingly looking up toward the notification window, and then looking toward the monster, he fearfully clenches his teeth, asking himself if they reply to what he is saying. Then he raises his voice and clenches his fists, asking who is he and where has he taken him. Then he angrily asks, why did he bring him there? In response, a notification window appears that this is the testing area for a player's awakening trail. The location was designed to assure the fairness of the trial. Kim surprisingly looked up toward the notification window, asking the player, awakening fairness because he didn't understand what was happening there. Where in the room he stands his corpses scattered all over because he killed and regenerated so many times. As he stands there blankly because he is unable to understand the situation happening to him, the notification window appears before him that humanity is a species capable of awakening its full potential. Then another notification window appears that the awakening trial will end once he has awakened his abilities and successfully attacked the monster. When this is finished, he will be returned to the real world. Also, do not be concerned about dying in the middle of the test. His body will be regenerated no matter how many times he dies in this area. Hearing that notification, Kim clenches his teeth, asking regenerated, do they think of his life as a video game, then stands there with a sad face. He thinks the whole thing sounded like a pretext for a fantasy novel, but he still had to believe what they said. 
because the pieces of his corpse were scattered right next to him. Then he clenches his teeth, thinking he is supposed to be a player, and he is never even given a choice while the monster roars and moves toward him. As the monster moved toward him, he fearfully stepped backward. The monster roared and created a magic ball with his voice and threw that huge magic ball toward Kim. That huge magic ball crashed Kim on the ground of that holographic room, but he with all his might skid and came out of that explosion, thinking he was forced to either repeat a painful death or accept the whole situation. However, Kim came out of that exploded magic ball and stood in the smoke. A bright wavy light started emerging from his body, and he got the notification that awakening success. His stats and abilities will now be generated, and then his stats window appear before him on which his HP, strength, agility, and mana are mentioned. Also, his level was increased from 0 to 1, his strength was increased to 25, his agility was increased to 11, and his mana was 22. Also, he got unique traits. Kim, after reading his stat window, clenched his fist, screeched his foot, and run toward the monster to attack him. As soon as he ran toward the monster, he got the notification window that awakened his ability and his physical enhancement. Kim, with all his might, made a fist and jumped toward the monster to punch him, thinking there was only one option for him. He had to accept everything they threw at him and finish this miserable trial. However, Kim punches the monster with all his might and crashes it. The smoke emerges from its body and the monster gets cracked. Kim punched the monster, threw away parts of its broken body and stood there. He got the notification window that the damage successfully inflicted awakening trial was complete. Then another notification window appears and they congratulate him on his awakening. Hearing that voice Kim smiled and then he excitedly cheered up and then another quest window appeared before him that he had completed the quest successfully. Also, he has obtained the physical enhancement ability. A wavy light came out of Kim's body and he stood there thinking that he would return to the world. As the wavy light was still coming out of his body, he stood there silently thinking and then he looked all around the holographic room. Then he looked up and raised his voice asking what was going on. He said the trial was complete stop messing around and let him out of there. However, many notification windows appear before him that the errors have occurred and he is unable to leave the testing area due to unknown error. Kim stands there sweating and panicking and asks what then another notification window appears before him and they inform him that they are initiating the awakening trial therefore the huge monster appears before him and he silently looks toward the monster asking what is he talking about? He can't leave the testing area as Kim stood there was blank and didn't understand what was happening around him. Meanwhile, the monster attacked Kim with its claw and splurged him. They regenerated Kim's body while his previous corpse was lying near him on the floor. As his body was regenerating, he slightly smiled saying give him a break. Then he raised his voice asking what is this meanwhile the monster attacked him with its claw and splashed him again Kim's body parts splash on the floor and they start regenerating his body again after his body regenerated. He sat there on the floor thinking of an unknown error it was like a bug in a video game and he was stuck in this dimension for an eternity like a bugged out video game character. He went through the endless cycle of death and regeneration for a week, a month, a year. He sits there blankly thinking his mind slowly wasted away while his corpses are lying there on the ground all around him. Furthermore, with the hopeless face, he thinks he was constantly regenerated physically, but not mentally but then. A window notification appears before him that his vitality has increased, and they are modifying backup data. Kim surprisingly looks toward his status window and jumps asking vitality to increase modifying backup data. In response, the notification window appears that he has increased his vitality by repeatedly taking hits from his opponent. He stood there before his notification window status thinking he didn't care about how it happened. Then he asked himself, did it just said that the backup data was being modified? Then he looked up excitedly asked then did the unknown error had been fixed as well and in response the window appeared that the error had not been changed and he was unable to leave this area for eternity. Kim hears that voice hopelessly smile and then the monster appears there and moves toward him to attack. However, Kim while running away thought some time went by again two years, three years, for years. He tried everything he could do to run away. He even tried to resist being killed by the monster. 
Therefore, his status window appeared before him, and this time his HP was above 1000, his MP was above 500 and his strength was above 80. Furthermore, his agility was above 40 and his mana was above 50. He read that status window, thinking these efforts increased his stats immensely, but they were all meaningless. In those years, the monster killed him thousands of times, and every time the monster killed him, they regenerated his body. Kim stands there injured, thinking he remembers what had happened on the first day, and he decides to stop resisting. However, when he came to that holographic room, the first day the window appeared before him that the test monsters were programmed to be transcendent tier creatures. His chances of killing them were zero. Moreover, ten years after his confinement, he says the system that he wants to ask a question. Kim hopelessly asks the system what's happening outside on Earth right now. The system replies, nothing much has changed on Earth times move 300 times faster in this dimension than it does on Earth. Furthermore, for 10 years, there are about 12 days in his world. Hearing this, Kim stands there and says, 12 days, then he clenches his teeth, remembering the message from his mother when she asks him to bring fried chicken for her. Then Kim, with a sad face looking toward his hand, says he promised to buy some fried chicken for his mother. Meanwhile, the monster attacks him and crashes him. After this, they regenerate his body again, and he sits there in the holographic room, thinking 500 years after his confinement. Everything becomes blurry to him, his family, his friends. He had even begun to forget who he was. Only one question lingered in his mind. Why did this thing happen to him? However, Kim sat there on the floor folding his arm. Meanwhile, the monster moved toward him from a side to crush him. As the monster from upside down extended its claw toward Kim, while he sat there was asked why, and he repeatedly asked his question. As the monster's claw came near him, he sat there looking down, punched the monster with his hand, and crashed its claw the monster roared. Kim sat there clenched his teeth and angrily asked why then he shouted and raised his voice, asking why as he was still shouting. Moreover, he raised his voice asking humanity to awaken the trial's fairness and the player's abilities. All of those didn't matter to him anymore. He only wanted to know one thing, then he asked them why this error happened to him. Then, with a hopeless voice, he says he only wanted to live a happy life and then remembers the time the part-time work in the store and clenched his teeth. He was furiously thinking about this all meanwhile. The monster moved toward him from behind his back to attack him. He stands there furiously thinking. There is only one target for his suppressed anger to turn to thinking this. He jumps toward the monster and punches him with all his might. However, ten years after humanity's awakening day on Earth, a crack appeared in the sky. An error message stating that an immeasurable burst of energy had erupted within the server. The system's firewall has been destroyed. After breaking through the crack with his fist, Kim came out of that holographic room while the trial monster inside had already perished. Kim stood up there in the sky while the wavy bright light was coming out of his body. However, the total period of his awakening trial was 3,000 years during which he was able to reach the maximum level for all of his stats. Kim HP, MP, Strength, Agility and Mana were reached to maximum level. However, the system counter is unable to connect to the main system due to a system error. Also, they are initiating offline self-synchronization. Kim stands there in the sky slightly opening his eyes, thinking every day for the past 3,000 years he has thought about the very first thing he wants to do once he returns to Earth, and he remembered the message from his mother when she asked him to bring some fried chicken for her. As he stands there, the notification window appears before him that system synchronization is complete 10 years have passed on Earth since his departure. Kim stands there up in the sky and looks down toward the city asking the system to find his mother's location right now. The system replies unable to run the search engine. This feature is unavailable in offline mode. Hearing this, Kim sighed saying to the system, it was as useless as ever then he descended to earth to find his home. Kim arrived in the city where he lived and stood outside the building where he lived with his family. Seeing the situation of the city, he worriedly asked what happened to their house, because the whole city was destroyed and barren. Meanwhile, Two military soldiers passed by him holding their guns and looking toward him, they stopped there. One of them calls out to Kim and asks him to listen to him. 
Kim stands there and turns his head to listen to him, and the soldier steps toward him holding his gun, informing him this place is a restricted area for civilians. Then he requested that move back to the safety zone. Immediately Kim looked toward the soldier, surprisingly thinking the military soldier had just called their neighborhood a restricted area. Kim stands there asking the soldier what exactly happened there. Hearing this, soldier surprisingly asks Kim what he means. And Kim stands there before them, asks them how this area became so demolished. Hearing this, one of the soldiers starts dizzying, while the other one, his companion, stands beside him, turns his head and looks toward him. Then he sighs and with closed eyes and a sad face, he asks Kim if Sir has been living under a rock. Then he tells Kim this entire region was destroyed during the dungeon break 10 years ago. Hearing this, Kim gets shocked and clenches his teeth thinking dungeon break, then asks himself if is he talking about the disaster back then. Then pointed toward the building where he used to live with his family, he asked the soldier what happened to the people living there. The soldier sighed and squeezed his eyes answering. They were all killed hearing this Kim was shocked and started trembling became speechless and asked himself if all killed his mother. As he was thinking the soldier stood before him and told him to wait, then he thoughtfully told some people who survived because they were outside. Furthermore, he heard the government evacuate them to a safety zone and looking toward Kim, he said he should head over there if he wanted to find them. Hearing this, Kim angrily looks toward the soldier and grabs his collar asking where is this place. The soldier gets scared and starts shuddering. Then the soldier starts sweating and holding Kim's hand pointing ahead replies, it was the shanty town in the B neighborhood. The other soldier holding the gun with one hand put his other hand on his companion's shoulder. Hearing this, Kim released the soldier's collar while both soldiers were scared. After this, Kim turned and ran away from there, and the soldiers standing behind were scared. Then the soldier whose collar Kim grabbed put his hands on his heart and sighed. Later, both the soldiers stand there and hear through the radio that was attached to one of them's shoulder with the belt. They alert the soldiers informing them they have a situation on their hands. A dungeon break is imminent in a nearby area. Also, the estimated location is the Shanty Town's emergency sector in the B neighborhood. Hearing this news, both saw Lighter fearfully look toward each other. However, in the B neighborhood emergency sector, a bright wavy light emerges in the sky while the military jeep screeches in that area and from one of the jeeps, Hyong Jin Oh, Lieutenant Colonel of the Capital Defense Force, comes out holding the cigarette in his mouth with his hand. He stands there holding that cigarette in his mouth, raises his voice saying secure the perimeter and calls for reinforcement. Then looking toward the sky where the bright light circle was emerging, he shouted the dungeon breaks about to unleash. There is no way they can stop this on their own. Then he angrily looks behind the soldier and shouts at him, asking what happened to the guild support is still not there. The soldier salutes him answering, no sir, they have just been dispatched. Hearing the colonel angrily hit his fist on the jeep and then he abuses the guild support shouting, they must be taking it slow because this is a shanty town and they are trying to take more of their funding. After this, Jian Li, first lieutenant of the capital defense force, came to lieutenant colonel with a sad face, asking what should they do now sir. Lieutenant colonel stands beside the jeep and turns his head angrily, asking what she thinks they should do. The end. Then he shouts from a line of defense and deals with the small monsters for now, and they will shoot the bigger ones down once they get some backup. Hearing this, Yunli gets speechless and then points ahead she asks if is he serious, sir. Then she raises his voice saying all of the civilians will be killed if they do that. However, Lieutenant Colonel shouts at her asking if would she rather have all of them killed by the monsters instead. Then Lieutenant Colonel abuse her saying just go and form a proper line. They will all be screwed if they let a monster escape from there. Hearing this, Lieutenant Yunli gets scared and speechless. As the military soldiers holding their weapons gather in Area B meanwhile, Kim steps there, stands behind the soldier jeep, looks toward that area and asks himself what is going on and why are there so many soldiers there as well. Then stands there, he asks the system what's going on around there. The system responds a dungeon break is imminent in B's neighborhood. Furthermore, the dungeon will spawn in approximately three minutes and hear the voice of that window. Kim stands there think a dungeon break. Then he asks himself if a disaster is going to happen in this neighborhood, and then he clenches teeth thinking his mother is in danger. However, Kim steps ahead to enter that area while the military soldiers stand there holding their weapons. 
They surprisingly turn their head and look toward him while he keeps stepping toward that area. Then one of the soldiers stops him there by putting a hand on his shoulder and requesting him to move back because the dungeon break is imminent in this area. Then says he has to evacuate this area. Hearing this Kim stands there and doesn't stop and angrily looks toward the soldier. However, looking toward him the two soldiers falter and thud backward on the road and Kim stands in between the soldiers and angrily looks toward them. While the soldiers gather around him get scared on the other side Lieutenant Colonel, and Yun Li stand far from the soldiers discussing the important matter. Lieutenant Colonel looks toward the soldier, and Kim angrily shouts asking who let a civilian in there. Then he raises his voice and gets him out of there immediately, while Yun Li stands beside Lieutenant Colonel surprisingly looking toward Kim. After this, on Lieutenant Colonel's order, all the soldiers clunk their guns toward Kim and gather all around him Kim silently stands in between the group of soldiers. Then he clenches his teeth and angrily looks toward the soldier and says scram. While the soldier stands there starts shuddering and they all retreat and he passes between them. Sees this? Yun Li scolds the soldiers asking what are they doing? They can't let a civilian enter the danger zone. While the two soldiers sit there on the road, one of them recognizes Kim and fearfully replies Yun Li player that man is a player madam. Hearing this, Yun Li was surprised when the wavy purple light emerged from the sky Kim kept stepping ahead toward that area and the soldiers silently stood behind his back holding their guns. As the bright light keeps cracking in the sky, it singles the beginning of the dungeon break. The sky clangs from that side where the bright light is emerging see this the soldiers start shuddering one of them fearfully asks the sky, just shattered however the monster starts pouring out of the sky and it causes the soldier to lose hope sees this the soldier gets scared and starts trembling a lot of monsters pour out of the sky and they spread in the area roaring while the soldiers stand there and shout that's the dungeon break. One of them fearfully looking up asks, this is ridiculous, how are they supposed to defeat those things with guns? Then he fearfully asks Yun Li if the guild support is not there yet, and she has no answer and stands there. Sees her running away the soldiers stand there fearfully stopping her to extend their hands and calling out her name. She keeps running toward area B where the monster spreads to attack with the fire. On the other side, Kim reached the Area B neighborhood. As he was climbing the stairs, a notification window appeared before him that the dungeon had been opened guaranteeing a dungeon rank of 5 stars. And he, while climbing the stairs, clenches his teeth, thinking he is sick and tired of these dungeons and monsters. As he was climbing the stairs, two monsters from the roof of the houses next to the stairs move toward him. One of the monsters roars and quickly moves toward him to kill him while Kim silently keeps ascending the stairs. As the monster gets near him from his backside, he punches the monster and splits it. Sees this, the other monster moves toward him quickly, while he stands there on the stairs, his back to them. The monster with several heads moves toward him to attack and Kim stands there turns and clenches the monster saying get out of his way, then he crashes the monster and falls him away. As Kim throws the monster away on the ground, the place where the monster falls the ground breaks apart. The monster gets severely injured and tremble lying there on the cracked ground. Kim jumps on the monster's head and splits it to see this. The other monster, his companion, gets furious and starts roaring. After this, a lot of monsters angrily move toward Kim to kill him, while he angrily attacks them and crashes many of them. Kim starts killing them one by one. He kills many of them, but many more appear there. He jumps up to attack the monster hits them with his leg and falls them away. Kim attacks four to five monsters in a single blow and crashes them all together. As he was killing them, meanwhile, the dragon monster appeared there and he jumped up and crashed the dragon monster with one hit and throws the dragon corpse toward its other companions. Sees this the other dragon monsters move toward him to attack him. However, Kim attacks them and splits the dragon monster into pieces. Kim stood there in the air after killing them while the dragon monster's body pieces were falling. Kim jumps in the air and makes his fist hit the remaining dragon monster and crashes them. On the other side, Yun Li was running to find Kim and finally, she arrived in Area B. She looked all around there thinking about where he was going. She saw him go this way. She climbs the stairs and stands upstairs. She is surprised to see Kim crashing, splitting and cracking the monster in the air. However, Looking up she surprisingly says, this is impossible even the military war machines are unable to stop a 5-star dungeon. 
Then, looking toward Kim, standing there between the dead monster's corpse, she asks herself, how could a single person achieve this? After killing all the monsters, Kim stands there. Meanwhile, a huge explosion occurs far from him. However, from that explosion, the boss monster appears and starts roaring, and when the boss monster sees his companion's corpse lying on the ground, he gets furious and his eyes turn red due to anger then he roars and extends his hands to attack Kim. Stands there Kim, gets the notification from the system that the boss monster has appeared. Also, another window appears before Kim that killing the boss monster will terminate the dungeon break. Hearing that notification voice, Kim clenched his fist and angrily looked up at the boss monster, and then he stepped toward the monster to kill him. Seeing Kim stepping toward him, the boss monster gets surprised and then he angrily roars while Kim stands there angrily looks up toward the boss monster and clenches his fist. Sees the boss monster Yunli plops on the ground and starts trembling asking herself, that's what a five-star boss is. While the monster was roaring there, meanwhile, some citizens heard that noise got there and stood beside the wall, thinking they are the survivors of the neighborhood. While the citizens were sacredly looking up toward the boss monster, Yunli stood there clenched her teeth thinking this was their chance. They needed to evacuate them. Then she turned her head and looked toward the citizens raising her voice they must get out of there immediately hearing her words the citizens look toward each other meanwhile the monster roars and they all get scared to hear that boss monster's voice they all start sobbing meanwhile the boss monster runs toward the citizens to kill them however they cry and start running to save their lives they all run away while kim stands silently there on the road and doesn't move while the monster was quickly moving toward them as the citizens were running to save their lives, among them, a lady holding the hand of her little daughter was running. Her daughter was crying and asking for help, when suddenly, her foot tripped with her leg and she fell there on the road with her teddy bear. The little girl lying there on the road cries, while calling out to her mother, her mother turns and runs toward her daughter to take her with hers. The boss monster gets near them and roars, and then he opens his huge mouth and throws her sticky tongue toward the lady and her daughter sees the monster's tongue coming toward them. The lady, while crying, holds her daughter tightly and hugs her. Kim gets there and splits the monster and the little girl, hugging her mother, stands there on the road and opens her eyes slightly to check why the monster hasn't attacked them. As she opened her eyes, she was surprised to see Kim standing there before them, holding the monster's mouth in hand. Then the lady, holding her daughter, runs away from there, thanking Kim for saving them from the monster. While Kim stands there, plop the monster's head on the road. After this, Kim stands there looking toward the citizen and asks the system to check if his mother is there. The system replies receiving the command. Then a window appears before him and he will begin searching the area based on his memory information. While Kim silently stands there to get the exact location of her mother, the system tells him two seconds until the search is complete. The time is counted down and when the system informs the search is complete. Hearing this, Kim's eyes open wide, and the system tells him zero match found exiting searching mode. Kim stands there hears this gets hopeless presses his lips and remembers his family when his mother lovingly calls his name and when his father lovingly calls him his son. Also, he remembers his little sister when she calls him big brother. Remembering his family Kim with teary eyes hopelessly stands there quietly. Then he thinks 3000 years throughout all that time, he struggled to not forget them, but it all just feels so faint now. Kim thinking this all, squeezes his eyes meanwhile, the monster gets there and roars behind him so loudly. While Kim silently stands there before the monster corpse, the monster roars so loudly that Yunli puts her hands on her ear and closes her eyes thinking what's this noise. After this, she winked and looked toward the monster. While the monster cracked and threw the magic balls that he created in its mouth with that loud noise toward Kim. Kim silently stands there with his back to the monster and asks the system to activate his ability and physical enhancement skills. The bright light spreads all around him. Therefore, the notification window shows that the physical enhancement is activated and his awaken mode is now on. Kim's eyes and hair start to glow. He turns his head, activates his energy and remembers the chat that he had had with his mother before entering that holographic room. Then he jumped up toward the monster while remembering the time when he was chatting to his mother in the store. He hits the monster's magic ball with his hand, 
and blocks his attack remembering the message of his mother when she asks him to bring some fried chicken for her. Sees this, Yunli stands down surprisingly looks up toward Kim blocks the monster's attack and thinks incredible he is deflecting the boss's attack out of the town. After deflecting the magic ball Kim tapped on the ground while Yunli stood behind him and surprisingly looked toward him thinking he didn't even leave a single one. The monster gets furious to see how Kim has blocked his attack and killed all his companions then he roars and angrily looks toward Kim and creates a huge magic ball in his mouth. The monster throws that magic storm from his mouth toward Kim, while Kim silently stands there in his power. A bright wavy light came out of Kim's hand and he made a fist with his hand and ran toward the monster to kill him. As Kim ran toward the monster, tears were flowing from his eyes because he was missing his family and the time he spent with them. The monster creates the magic tornado and throws it toward Kim. Kim jumps toward the monster boss and punches him with his fist. The boss monster with Kim's one punch destroyed and starts disappearing. Sees this, the citizen and the military people stand there get surprised and then the bright light emerges from the sky and Kim's body is completely covered with that bright light. Kim stands there before the ruined ground and Yun Lee sits there aside and sees this all she is shocked and speechless. Kim stands there, deactivating his ability and stares at the ruined ground with teary eyes, thinking he is tired of all this. Then he squeezes his eyes meanwhile Kim's mother runs and quickly climbs the stairs holding the poster in her arms move toward Kim. See her Yun Lee sits there with folded legs on the ground and surprisingly looks toward her. Kim's mother looking toward her son extends her hand and smiles stands behind her and calls out Kim's name. Kim stands there turns his head and looks toward his mother. Sees his mother before him he is surprised and the notification window appears that voice data is identified. The information matches with the player's memories, while Kim looking toward his mother thinking the past 3000 years ran through his mind. Tears start flowing from his eyes, and he stands there thinking his long-lost emotions begin to burst within him. Kim cries out to his mother, his mother stands before him also cries, and while crying she puts her hand on her mouth. After this, both mother and son ran toward each other as his mother ran the poster. She held in her arm fell from her hand and flew in the air. And that posters were of Kim's missing report. Both of them tightly hug each other and burst into tears. Kim's mother holds his son tightly, sobbing, asking where in the world had he been. She searched everywhere looking for him. Kim, while holding her mother, bursts into tears and presses his lips. He cries and apologizes to his mother for that. He can't get her fried chicken as he promised. As both of them stand there hugging each other tightly, the monster throws his tentacle toward Kim's mother and splurts her. That tentacle pierces Kim's mother's stomach and she takes a deep breath. Kim stands there holding his mother and with teary eyes, he looks toward his mother and calls out her name. Also, the drops of blood spurts on Kim's face. Kim stands there thinking about 3,000 years, which is how long he spent training on top of his corpses, but this empowered body couldn't even protect the one he cared for. Kim's mother's blood dripped onto the ground and the tentacle pierced from her stomach while Kim stood there holding his mother in his arms. The monster squelches the tentacle from Kim's mother's stomach and she plops on the ground, then she thuds there. While Kim sits beside her, he calls out to his mother. The bloody monster swings its tentacle. While Kim sits there holding his mother in its arms, crying. Seeing this, the monster gets happy and squeaks its tentacle toward Kim. But before the monster attacks him, Yun Li gets there aside, clunks her gun and starts shooting the monster. She hits the bloody monster and the bullets pierce from its head. Kim put his mother's head in his lap and cried, calling out to his mother. His mother was injured, lying in her son's lap, brushing her hand on his face. Also, blood was flowing from her mouth. Kim's mother lovingly looks toward her son, saying don't cry and that she loves him and then, her hand plops on the ground. Kim sits there holding his mother in his lap, looks up, screams and cries. He feels hopeless in the 39th Battalion, Capital Defense Force in the Control Center. The Lieutenant Colonel was smoking a cigarette while sitting on a chair with his legs on the table and Yun Lee stands before her. Then he asks Yun Lee what Kim is doing to gather so much attention in a single month. She replies he is clearing every dungeon he can find and the nearby dungeons of this region have already been devastated. 
Further, she says the guild's complaints are piling up and several are expected to take action very soon. He rips the envelope from his pocket, then extends his hand and puts it in front of her, saying they have their orders. He leaves. She silently looks toward the envelope and he says her recruit Jibong Kim before he causes any more trouble on the other side Kim is killing the monsters in the dungeon. Kim skids and jumps toward the monster, attacking it with all his might and a vast, dust explosion occurs in the dungeon. As soon as the dust explosion ended, Kim stood there holding the monster's skull in his hand and the blood was dripping from the monster's mouth. Sees this, a bunch of monsters get there holding the sword. Kim kills them all one by one with their sword. Moreover, the monster spurt corpse lying there around him on the ground and thousands of more monsters run toward him to kill him. Kim pulls out the sword from the dead monster's corpse and raises it, then activates his physical enhancement ability. Kim's body starts to glow and his eyes and hair turn gray. Kim creates the storm with his magic and then he points the sword toward the monster and due to that storm, the sword cracks into pieces. The storm moved toward the monster and the ground cracked there due to that storm. The window appears that all monsters are eradicated and the dungeon has been cleared. After this, Kim sits on the stone under the sky on a rainy night, while Yun Li gets there holding the umbrella. She puts her umbrella on Kim, he heads up and looks toward her. She is getting drenched in the rain, but she raises her umbrella on Kim. Looking toward him, she says she searched everywhere for him. Then she slightly smiles and briefly introduces herself, saying that she is Jean Yun Li from the Capital Defense Forces. Furthermore, she says this was the first time they had met, but it wasn't the best time to introduce herself before. Kim sits there, head down and silently listens to her, but doesn't respond. Sees this, Yun Li says she understands what he is going through with the monsters. Then she asks him if he wants to destroy all the dungeons in this world. Is she right? Then, looking toward him, she says, but that would be utterly pointless because the dungeons respawn after a certain amount of time. He would only waste his time and energy by venting like this. Kim doesn't respond to her, and she stands there in the rain, keeping the umbrella over him. After some time, Kim replied, asking her if he should sit there and do nothing. Yunli looked toward him, saying not what she was trying to say as she was about to complete her sentence. But before she completes her sentence, Kim adds his point, saying that for 3,000 years, he had to suffer bone-breaking, flesh-ripping pain. Every single day back there, even as his body broke down and turned to dust, he still endured that hell to return to where he belonged. Then Kim quickly gets up and that umbrella falls in Yoon's hands. She surprisingly looks toward him and he stands there before her, looking into her eyes and asking, but all of that effort is wasted now and she still wants him to corpse himself. Then, looking toward her with teary eyes, he asks if she wants him to endure more than this, as they both stand in the rain. He stepped ahead to leave, while she stood there, head down in the rain, saying she would help him to get his revenge. Hear this, he stops there and she stands behind him and says, Dungeons, monsters. She will help him get rid of all of them, but he has to come with her. Kim silently stands ahead of her in the rain and she stands back at him, looking toward him. Six months later, in intense care, Kim's mother was admitted and she was in a coma. Kim goes to the hospital to see his mother. He stands outside, looks at her through the mirror window and puts his hand on the window. He silently, looking toward his mother, smiles, calling out to her mother. Moreover, he says he has become a civil servant and a pretty high-ranking one, so he won't be able to visit as often now. Further, he asks if she knows how government employees are always busy. Then he smiles, saying don't be sick just because he is gone for a while and asks her okay. After this, he brushes his hand on the window, saying he will be back soon and then he opens his coat button and moves toward the exit door of there. He scanned his thumb in the thumb scanner as he scanned the door open and he came out. As soon as he came out, on either side, civil servant officers were there to take him. Seeing him there, they all salute him and he extends his hand, gesturing to them all. It's all right, and then he steps ahead and pulls his tie. As he steps ahead, his clothes become physical armor and he comes to his power. He activated his physical enhancement power. A bright light came out of his body and he stood there, ordering the officer to let go. After this at night, 
They all go to the dungeon where the colossal monster hawks are flying. Kim stands in his activated energy and looks up toward the hawk monster. He jumps up. The monsters are squawking. He attacks the monsters and kills them all in one blow. After killing the monster hawk, Kim, in his power, stands there and a bright aura emerges from his body. Captain Kyle Beak sits in the bar, wearing his uniform and hat on his head, sitting on the chair where he is drinking the wine. Also in the bar, the news was on television that the government had officially announced its relationship with the SHIELD Guild. Two reporters were giving this news when one told the viewers about the government's decision. Another one, the lady added her point, tells the viewers about discontinuing the SHIELD Guild's protective services in the Seoul metropolitan area. Captain Cheol sits on the chair, fills his glass of wine, adds the ice cube to the glass and then clans it to melt the ice in the wine. After this, he gulps half a glass of wine, puts the glass on the counter and sighs. Meanwhile, the director of the SHIELD Guild comes there and sits on the chair bedside Cheol. Captain Cheol heads down and asks him what business he has there. Hearing this, Captain Cheol remains silent. Then he removes his hat from his head and, looking toward the director, replies, Get to the point, sir. The director looks toward Captain Cheol and answers that honesty is what he likes about him. Then he asks if he is aware of him too, right? While Captain Cheol sits there gulping wine when the director smiles, saying to Captain Cheol that everyone's been talking about the men. Hearing this, Captain Cheol flinched the wine glass from his mouth, while the news reporter on television was giving the news that due to the sharp decline in the dungeon breaks recently, experts have speculated that the government may have acquired a secret weapon, as Captain Cheol was still gulping wine and the director sat there listening to the news. Putting his hand in his pant pocket, he says the guy is ruining it for them out there. He has caused a significant setback in their business. However, while rattling the ice in the wine glass on the table, Captain Cheol asks the director if they should get rid of him. Hearing this, the director asks Captain Cheol why he always has to be so frightened talking about removing someone so quickly like that. After this, the director swishes the paper on the counter before Captain Cheol and Captain Cheol sits there, turns his head and silently looks toward the paper. Captain Cheol starts to say something but stays silent and presses his lips together. Then he gets up, picks up that paper and turns from there, holding his hat. While the director sits on the chair behind, looking toward Captain Cheol, he asks where he is going. He still needs to finish his drink. On the other side, in the five-star dungeon, the monster bird nests at nighttime. The sky is dark and a bright light emerges in the sky. And from that bright light, Kim and his team members wearing their costumes appear. They all stand on the cliff and Kim stands first, while his team members stand behind him. Then, the notification window appears before Kim that he has entered the five-star dungeon, the monster bird's nest. This dungeon is due for a dungeon break soon. Kim and his team stood up the cliff, looking down toward the monsters flying there as Kim stared at the monster. His team member stands behind him and informs Captain Kim that this is the last that's due for a dungeon break this month. Kim turns his head, answering all right, all units stand by at this location. After this, Kim jumped up the cliff toward the monster bird nest, while his team members stood there watching him. Kim flew in the air and moved toward the monster's nest while the monster's birds were squawking. Standing there in the air, Kim asks the system about the boss's location. The window appears before him and the system responds to him, receiving a command scanning for the boss's location. As Kim stands there in the air, monster birds, while squawking, start gathering all around him. Kim punches the monster bird and splits it. After this, he starts crashing the monster bird. Then he sat on the monster bird, hit it and jumped up. The monster fell away injured while Kim jumped up in the air. The window appeared before him with five seconds until the scan was complete as the time was counted down. In the meantime, Kim crashes many of the bird monsters. As the system says, three seconds are left while Kim is crashing the bird monster's head. Then he hits the monster and splits it. Sees this, many more monster birds, while squawking, quickly move toward him. As Kim was killing the monster bird, the system informed him that there was one second left. The bunch of monster birds gathered around Kim, and he crashed them all with his one hit. Meanwhile, the system tells him the location scan is completed. The boss is located 7-8 miles southeast of the current location. 
Kim kills the monster birds with his activated physicality enhancement power storm, and the bright light spreads there, while all the monster birds crash. Kim stands in the air, and the bright light comes out of his body while the window appears before him, activating the ability of physical enhancement. Also, his awakened mode is on and then Kim flies fast in the air and quickly crosses all the mountains in his path and finally arrives at the destination. Kim's body was completely covered with the bright light and the window appeared before him that he had arrived at his destination exiting navigation mode. Kim stands there in the air. Meanwhile, the monster bird boss Albatross gets near him and he looks up toward the monster boss. The monster boss, Albatross, angrily looks toward Kim and squawks while he silently stands before it. On the other hand, Kim's team members stand up on the hill. One of them looks through the binoculars to find out what is happening on the other side. The team vice captain asks the one who was looking through binoculars how the situation was going. The one who is watching through the binoculars replies it will probably be over soon, with Captain Kim winning by a landslide. Hearing this, the team members murmur and one of them surprisingly says incredible. He is defeating hundreds of monster birds and the boss by himself. He is a complete monster. After this, the sixth captain stands behind him and says all right, they should be moving soon as well. Retrieve all of the mana stones they can find and don't leave a single one behind. All the team members stand there, turn their heads and reply yes, vice captain. As they all stand there, suddenly a bright light emerges from behind. Sees this vice captain, surprisingly thinks why, is the dungeon entrance opening right now and from that light, a dagger swishes and moves toward them. Quickly sees the dagger coming toward them. The vice captain's eyes wide open and he fearfully thinks of a dagger. However, the dagger flips and splits the skin of the vice captain's face and the girl with her team comes out of that dungeon entrance holding swords. The girl attacked the vice captain with her sword and slashed him. Chiel steps toward the vice captain's body answering the fact that he died from a blow, like that means he wasn't Jibong Kim. Hearing this, the team members are surprised and one of them thinks Jibong Kim is after their captain. After this, Captain Chiol stands before Kim's team members and looks toward them, asking if he only wants to know one thing, which is that one of them is Jibong Kim. On the other side, Kim, with all his might, makes a fist and punches the boss monster Albatross, while the bright light spreads there when Kim punches the monster. Also, that bright light was coming from Kim's body and this light spread wherever he went. Kim hits the boss monster Albatross while the monster squawks and blood spurts out of its mouth. After this, the monster boss gets furious and while squawking, he creates a fireball in its mouth. Kim stares at that fireball. Then the monster throws a firestorm toward Kim with its breath and it causes an explosion and Kim completely sinks into that firestorm. On Captain Chili's side, he stands behind Kim's team member waiting for the answer. Then suddenly, everything there starts shaking. Captain Chiol stands there surprisingly, thinking an earthquake could have been a large explosion at a distance. After this, looking down, he sighed, thinking, could it be? Then he angrily cracked his hand and stepped over to Kim's team members, saying it looked like none of them was Jibong Kim. Captain Chiol heads up and looks toward them, saying he guess he will just have to kill all of them until Kim decides to show up. On the other side of the dungeon, a man with silver hair stands up at the hill edge thinking the man is there. They are scared, and then he asks himself why he has come already. Furthermore, he needs to find out if it is because the rift formed earlier than he thinks it was. What was that rift about? He doesn't know. Nobody does. They need to find out if the rift is harmful and go and find him. However, at Kim's side, the firestorm crackles and the window appear before him with that unique trait generated elemental resistance rank S. Therefore, Kim stands there controlling that firestorm with his left hand, and his status window appears before him that his level had already reached the maximum points. At this time, by directing that firestorm, he got a new elemental resistance rank S. After some time, the firestorm ended and there the smoke remained only Kim stood before the injured Albatross and Albatross furiously looked toward him. Kim looks up toward Albatross, saying, let's wrap this up and then he clenches his fists, turns and jumps toward Albatross to attack. Kim punches the Albatross on its stomach with all his might and splits it, 
The albatross crashes to the ground into pieces and the window appears before Kim that the boss monster has been eradicated. He has cleared the dungeon. As soon as Kim killed Albatross, Kim stands there before the Albatross's corpse and the sparkle occurs in Albatross's head. From that sparkle, a sphere fall. Kim picked that sphere, thinking, did the boss drop this? He had never seen this thing before. Stand there, Kim stares at that sphere, asking the system what this thing is. The system starts scanning that sphere and answers him that time is a day stone. Kim surprisingly asked the day stone what is it for, and then a window appeared before him on which it was written that the system was unable to access further information in offline mode. Hearing this, Kim makes an annoyed face, asking the system why he doesn't know anything useful. Meanwhile, several windows of warning appear before Kim, and he surprisingly looks toward the windows, showing that his allies are under attack at the dungeon entrance. On Captain Chiol's side, he was beating Kim's team members one by one. He crushed one of them and punched him in the face and his teeth fell out, and then he hit and fell him away. Sees this, his companion takes out his sword and moves toward Captain Kyle to attack him. But before he attacks, Captain Kyle punches him and injures him. Blood spurs out of his nose and mouth, then Captain Kyle hits him with his leg, then he jumps and crushes his head and then Captain Kyle cracks his head on his knees while his teeth fall out. The sword fell from his hand, and Captain Cheol hit and thud him away. After gravely affecting all of them, Captain Cheol stood there saying no. One of them was Kim, while the blood of those people was on his clothes and face. As they all stand there up on the cliff, the moon flashes and they all look up toward the moon. Then Captain Cheol's companion comes to him and bows his head before him, informing him someone has just defeated the boss and cleared this dungeon. Hearing this, Captain Cheol looking up toward the sky, remains silent and thinks that Kim had made an explosion earlier. After this, Captain Cheol turns and with his one hand, he wipes the blood from his face and puts his second hand in his pant pocket, saying his companion let's go, find a path for them to climb down this cliff. His team members turn and step ahead on their boss's order, answering yes sir, as they all move to leave. Kim, with his bright light, jumps there on the cliff and crashes into the area of the cliff where he lands. They all stop there and Captain Cheol turns his eyes to look at a brilliant light spread all around. After some time, the light fades and the dust and smoke spread there, while they all get scared and step backward. From that smoke, Kim's team member lying there injured notices a reflection. The smoke disappears and Kim comes out of that smoke. Seeing him there, one of the team members smiles, saying Captain Kim, while Kim stands there angrily, clenching his fist and looking toward Captain Cheol and his team members. After this, he steps ahead toward Captain Cheol, while Captain Cheol stands there, putting his hand in his pocket and says to Kim he is finally there. Also, Captain Cheol's team members stand behind him, holding sticks. Kim keeps stepping toward him. Captain Cheol, looking toward Kim, says they have been wanting to see him for a long time, and then he gives Kim a little introduction of himself telling he is Cheol Beak, the scouting captain of the Shield Guild. He presses his lower lips between his teeth. As Kim stepped toward him, and the sky aside them got purple. Seeing Kim in front of him, fear fell on Captain Cheol. However, the sky and trees become purple and Captain Cheol becomes afraid and continuously looks at Kim unblinkingly. Captain Cheol's face starts to sweat and the bright light reflects in his eyeballs. Kim stands before him, turning into a monster. That monster takes out his tongue and puts the tip of its tongue near Captain Cheol's eyes. Sees this, Captain sweat and understands Kim's powerful aura. However, everything gets normal. The weather, the sky and Kim. Kim stands there before Captain Cheol, seeing him near the captain stepping backward, his eyes wide open due to fear. Both Kim and Captain Cheol stand before each other and the sweat is dripping from the captain's face. He was unable to speak, and then he started to tremble, thinking about this overwhelming pressure. Kim stands before him and calls out to him while Captain flinches and his mouth falls open in fear. Captain Cheol starts trembling, and Kim asks him if he has just said that he is from the Shield Guild. Captain's companion sees this, stands behind him and gets angry. Then, one of them points toward Kim angrily, asking to show some proper respect toward their captain. After a second, the other one stands beside them, 
shouting at Kim if he wants them to end his life. Captain Cheol stands there before them, turns his head on them, scolds them and orders them to shut their mouth. Captain Cheol's companions reply, Yes, sir, and then Captain squeezes his eyes, recalling the words of the director who comes to him in the bar. Then he remembers when the director looking toward him gave an evil smile, saying there had been an order to contact him and recruit him into the guild. He will be treated as a team captain. Remembering the words, Captain Cheol pressed his lips. He thought that was a load of nonsense. Furthermore, he believes this man is far too powerful to be recruited as a mere captain and they have to make him an ally, even if they have to recruit him as an executive for it. Stand there. Captain Cheol regains his spirit and says, Kim, listen. He is sure he has heard of their guild as well. Everyone knows that they are effectively the strongest guild in South Korea and they extend the offer for him to join them. If he does, they will let him have everything he could ever desire. However, everything he could ever do didn't contain a single lie because the minimum annual salary of a guild's captain was 3 billion won. And the authority of a major guild could not be challenged even by a national government. However, Kim's team member, the one whose eye was plopped lying there injured on the cliff, thinks that without Captain Kim, their team will be hopeless. Moreover, many players considered a guild's recruitment offer to be a significant turning point in their lives. It was an offer that nobody could refuse and a desperate wish for any player in this world. Captain Cheol's team members stand behind, laughing, gossiping to each other that they won't reject this offer. Kim stays silent and then, after a minute, he says he has one question for him. Captain smiles responding to being his guest while thinking yes, Kim is interested. Kim asks the SHIELD Guild, who is responsible for the capital city's defense, if he is right. Then he clenched his teeth and remembered the time when the monster stabbed its tentacle in her mother's stomach. Then Kim angrily asks Cheol if the B neighborhood shantytown emergency sector is also under the guild's responsibility. Cheol smiles and replies, of course and their guild will have control over many more as soon as Cheol replies. Kim punches him and falls him at the feet of his team members. Captain Cheol gets severely injured and his teeth fall out while his team members stand there to abuse Kim, asking what he thinks he is doing. Kim stands there and asks them, but they can't tell. Then he answers he is trying to avenge his fallen subordinates, so this has absolutely nothing to do with his emotions. However, the Shield Guild was indeed the strongest guild. They protected the capital and surrounding regions from the high-ranked rift. They were defending South Korea. The guild had approximately 5,000 members, including three top-ranked players. But Baek Chai Young had no idea that Jibong would be so strong, because he alone could defeat all the helpers he brought with him. Each of these people was a member of an elite unit. Jibong easily wiped his feet on them as if they were dirty rags. Moreover, he could do such a thing with a completely unperturbed face, as if nothing was happening at that moment. As a result, after this case, absolutely everyone involved in it was rushed to surgery because all the patients had a critical situation and internal bleeding. And then, watching all of this, the principal appeared, who grudgingly remarked that this was the reason he had requested that they act peacefully and explained to the nurses that he needed to talk to Captain Beck Chai Young. So they had to leave them alone. But the girls looking over Baek Chai Young reported that he was still in a bad state and was unconscious. The principal calmly said that he would think of something to do about it, and reaching into his pocket noticed that it was even embarrassing to look at such a picture, and the headmaster couldn't believe to the end that someone was able to beat up Baek Chai Young so badly. But now we need to find out what happened. So, he picked up the syringe and started injecting the drug, and then the man immediately woke up and tried to catch his breath and looking over his headmaster stated that Beck J. Young looked terrible, and he clearly didn't look like the same famous captain he knew. And then the agitated man apologized for what happened, but the principal demanded an explanation of what happened. And then Beck Cha Young admitted that the entire team was confirmed by one person, and that was Jibong. The headmaster couldn't believe that his strength was so great. Beck Cha Young explained that his strength wasn't just great, but immeasurable. But the headmaster only calmly asked how Jibong would behave against the master and the guild. And then thinking about it, Baek Cha Young realized that the answer was obvious to him, because he was sure that their master would win, but after thinking about it for a while, he couldn't give an exact answer. Jibong and Shield Guild Master. 
These two were beings beyond his comprehension. So it was obvious that Baek Cha Young, who was in a completely different category, could not compare them. So, he admitted she didn't know the exact answer. The principal asked if they could get this guy on their side. But Baek Cha Young will explain that he's not sure, because for some reason Ji Bong was initially hostile towards them. And remembering everything that had happened, shaking with terror, Baek Cha Young explained that his hostility was really at an all-time high. And then the director, realizing the situation, started to leave, explaining that Baek Cha Young needed a good rest because he had woken him up by using the medicine. So pretty soon, Baek Cha Young would feel absolutely terrible. An existing director grudgingly realized that they needed to urgently start cooperating with Ji Bong before the other guilds would suggest him to do so. Afterwards, he called and demanded that the murderer be sent, namely the vice master and pondered that if they couldn't get Ji Bong, they should get rid of him and in that case, he just wouldn't be able to stop them. A little while later, Ji Bong was already fighting monsters that appeared from the four-rank rift, which was certainly no problem for him and finally after dealing with one of them Ji Bong, wanted to ask the system some questions, and asked her to tell him a little more about that day stone, she accepted the request, and explained that the ancient stone was the black orb he had picked up, but it was no longer possible to find more information in the offline module, and so she cleared the day stone and then looking at it, Ji Bong didn't understand why she did that. The system explained that absorbing the day stone can have two effects. The first is an increase in strength, and the second is access to rift information. And then, after thinking about it, Ji Bong allowed her to absorb the sphere. At this time, an unknown person approached one of the girls and holding out a drawing to her, asked if she had seen a guy and she seemed very surprised, for she did not understand whether he really expected her to understand anything of what he had drawn, so she left. By the time Ji Bong absorbs this stone, the system has expanded, and then there were slight vibrations that few people could distinguish, but the guy who was looking for Ji Bong was happy because he could finally find him. And then finishing the system reported that it had discovered human analysis and emotion expression, but Ji Bong didn't understand how this function was different from human search. The system explained that the feature allowed you to find out additional information including height, weight, date of birth, and the like. And if the subject was a player, you could additionally view their profile as well. And then thinking Ji Bong realized that it was of some use, but asked about the expression of the emotion, and then the system showed him what it meant and displeased Ji Bong did not understand. Did it really mean everything? Eventually returning back to base, he deactivated his ability and requested that the system find the nearest bus stop to leave. In the end, while Ji Bong was coming down, the system had already found the routes and the stop was a kilometer and a half away. But at that moment, an unexpected system asked him whether he wanted to walk or fly. But for Ji Bong, it was rare for the system to ask any questions. These were most likely the capabilities of the new expansion. He calmly replied that the captain had previously asked him not to fly, but to walk, because such abilities created chaos among the citizens. Ji Bong walked quietly until he sensed something, for his attention was immediately focused on one person who stood out from the crowd. And Ji Bong immediately noticed that guy following him and wondered if it was someone from the Shield Guild. But there was clearly something wrong with that guy. He didn't feel any hostility from the unknown stalker and realized that in that case, it was a great chance to try out new features on him and asked the system to analyze it. But at that moment, as if sensing this guy smiled and the system gave an error because it couldn't be analyzed, Ji Bong ended up calmly walking to the bus stop and waiting for his transportation when the system asked that he be careful as his pursuers were approaching. And then a guy walked up to him and Ji Bong was even happy that he finally showed up, but he didn't realize who he was. The guy just sat down next to Ji Bong, which seemed strange enough to him because he wasn't acting like other people. Ji Bong didn't understand if he wanted something from him. But judging from his candid smile, the guy wasn't even going to hide the fact that he was stalking Ji Bong. Eventually the bus arrived and Ji Bong decided to go home quietly. But when he looked out the window, he noticed that the guy was gone. The next moment, Ji Bong noticed that that guy was sitting next to him. As a result, Ji Bong, who was 30-20, was shocked for the first time since he got out of the awakening zone. At this time, one of the men belonging to the Shield Guild was fighting the monster and the battle was going easily enough. So, he was able to chop it in half with a single blow, after which he also pounced on the rest of the beasts, 
which in turn began to attack and easily dispatched each of them. And even when one of those snakes swallowed him, he just went through its gut getting out. Then in the last stroke of the moment, since something so dropped his sword and demanded that whoever was hiding come out as soon as. It turned out to be the principal who smilingly looked over the fighter's weapon and stated that he was close to snagging it. This guy was the vice master of the shield guild and also a sword emperor. His name was Park Tyrim. The director noticed that Park Tyrim needed to be more careful, for the venom of these large snakes was eating away at his equipment, so he should at least try to protect his body a little. But disgruntled Park Tyrim remarked that I didn't understand the reason for the director's coming because he had previously ordered the director not to come unless it was an urgent matter. And then the disgruntled principal stated that the matter was indeed urgent, for he had someone to kill. But the boy calmly turned away to report that he had no interest in such a thing and could guess such an assignment from someone in the scouts. The headmaster calmly said that he had already given this order to Bayek Chayang, but those couldn't even leave a scratch on their target, for he had destroyed them all. Park Tae-yong was shocked because Baek cha Young's team is a special shield guild force that only faces players, and they were talented fighters that the guild raises with special care. They were trained by the guild's best masters. They are the guild's priority, received the best inventory, and the Baek cha Young team had never failed a mission before that day. And then, Park Tyreem admitted that at first the man was just interested in him, but now he was all about the attention. Eventually, after all the story, Park Tyrim destroyed everyone who obstructed his path and came to the Prime Minister's office and with a smile greeted the woman who appeared in front of him. She displeasedly examined the uninvited guest who had arrived. This particular girl, who was the Prime Minister, was also a S-ranked player at the same time. She's a player of one of the best abilities and decided to take the path of politics in order to save more players than she could if she continued the warrior path. And she was a South Korean hero, so she looked at the mess Park Tyreen had made and said, he should have addressed her more politely, but the man noticed that she was too rough with him, for it had been three years since he had last seen her. But Prime Minister Kusan Ron prepared her weapon and stated that three years have indeed passed and apparently Park Tyarem has already forgotten her character. This girl, despite her position, had a unique trait. Ten years ago, she was one of the first to awaken. In other words, she was the first after which she activated her mass teleportation skill, 7-star magic, to get them as far away from the city as possible. Park Tae Rim looked back and realized that Prime Minister Ku Sanran had not changed at all during that time, because she probably thought that if they fought in that place, uninvolved bystanders could be harmed. But Prime Minister Ku Sanran, prepared to attack, explained that Park Tae Rim has since been arrested on charges of treason. By this time, Jibong had already arrived at his stop at the Defense Force Headquarters. The guy was still chasing him. They arrived at the military base and upon seeing them, the military were surprised to see such company of the commander. But Jibong remarked that he didn't know the man at all. And then the military asked this guy to stop because he couldn't go any further because it was a military base and civilians weren't allowed inside. Jibong quietly pondered about who this guy was because he was strange enough. But he didn't care much either way. After which he thought about the fact that the system might have gotten information about the cause of the rifts. But now, if he even asked her, it was unlikely she would tell him anything. And maybe if he could collect more day stones and absorb them, it would make the system smarter than it was now. But the next moment when the guy was changing, he noticed his stalker peeping after him. And the military was running around trying to arrest him. A disgruntled Jibong realized that this man was clearly going to drive him crazy soon. Between the Prime Minister and Park Tae Rim, the battle continued and each of them was not going to back down from their goal. Park Tae Rim demanded that Prime Minister Ku Sun Ran give him Jibong, and that was his demand as the Vice Master of the Shield Guild, as well as the Sword Emperor. And the disgruntled woman finally realized what the Guild had been doing all this time, and stated that it was because of Jibong, who had recently dealt with all the rifts, that the government had not renewed the contract with the Shield Guild for the defense of the capital. And because they weren't getting money from the government, they were having difficulties. So, they tried to take Jibong, offering him money and status and until then, everyone turned a blind eye to the Shield Guild's crime. But no money or status had no effect on Jibong, and he destroyed their elite scout troop. So the only thing the Shield Guild could do now was to kill the guy. Park Tyrum admitted that it would be a waste to kill a genius like him. 
But they were left with no choice after all, if they want the government to continue the capital defense contract with them. But Prime Minister Kusan Ran remarked that the guy made a huge mistake when he decided to attack her, because by his threats, he obviously won't make her give them jibong. And what's more, he won't let her. He even dared to attack her subordinates. So, as she prepared to attack, the girl noticed that this guy needed a good beating as punishment for his misdeeds and activated her ability. When Jibong changed his clothes and left his room, he noticed a bound stalker and it was explained to him that the guy was always standing by his door. So, they didn't know what to do and he didn't resist at all. So, they just decided to tie him up and leave him there. And then a disgruntled Jibong agreed to talk to him and wondered why he was pursuing him in the first place. But he only remarked with a smile, that he just wanted to see Jibong and nothing more. And then grudgingly, Jibong asked how the guy even knew him, but the pursuer only said with a whole smile that of course he knew Jibong. For he had come from the other side and explained that he had always been curious to know what had come into their world and to figure it out, he decided to follow Jibong, which seemed logical enough. And then a shocked Jibong realized that apparently this strange man knew what had happened to him. But the unknown man only asked that Jibong take care of him, since he would now follow him. But at that moment, one of Jibong's subordinates appeared and put a blade to the guy's neck, warning him that he should have been more careful with his words, because he was very reckless. And they were in the army, and it wasn't a place he could just come to. But it seems the guy was totally unafraid, and just offered to let them take him into the military to be a soldier. And then under such a brazen statement, Han Jiwoon only laughed, but still agreed. But they had a rule. After all, if someone wanted to join the team, he had to fight him, and if he could defeat him, they would accept him as one of them. But Jibong tried to stop the vice captain. But Han Jiwoon only asked that Jibong not to interfere, because he couldn't ignore something like this, even at his request. And then thinking about it, the guy realized that if he had to defeat Han Jiwoon in order to join, he was probably the weakest. And then, Han Jiwoon grudgingly approached to report that he was indeed right, and he was one of the weakest among them all. At this time, a battle was going on between the Prime Minister and Park Tae Rim. And while hiding from the attack, the man realized that apparently the Prime Minister was not going to give up Jibong. So, he took out a stone and asked her to think about the title she held because she was the strongest in Korea. Then teleporting noticed that he even wondered if she could protect those people who were dear to her, then moved to leave her there on the field. And then the madly angry girl realized that Jibong was really strong and without a doubt, his skills were rank S. But this man was exactly the same. But on top of that, he also had a mythic level weapon, the Dragon Tooth. So, for Jibong, a guy like this was too terrifying an opponent. At this time, the fight began in reflecting the attacks, the guy stated that he only needed to win in order to remain. After which he attacked, and then Han Ji-woon realized that the difference in their strength was really in mind-boggling. But realizing what a punch like that would do, Ji-bong immediately blocked it with just one finger. Han Ji-woon's body broke into a cold sweat as he didn't even realize how strong Ji-bong was. But the man only calmly remarked that his pursuer had never once introduced himself to him before. And then Ji-bong introduced himself. Then he also asked a guy to introduce himself. His name was Kong Hui. At this moment, Han Ji Woon approached the commander and Ji Bong calmly informed that he was clearly not with Kong Hui's opponent. After all, realizing the abilities of one's opponent was also a skill. But Kong Hui immediately realized that the words were not addressed to a military man. But to him, Ji Bong was glad that his interlocutor was not a fool and offered to fight him. And Kong Hui admitted that she thought about it a lot. Everyone watching this picture literally couldn't believe that this guy actually decided to fight with their leader. Because he would definitely die. They were members of the Rift Cleanup Team, Captain Jibong's personal team. And all these people have been by Jibong's side for six months. And even though Han Ji-woon realized that Kong Wai's attacks were quite strong, but their captain's strength was on a completely different level, Jibong ordered Kong Wai to attack first. He did so, but he dodged the first attack. After that, Kong Hui attacked again. But Jibong calmly picked the moment when he was open, then attacked and noticed that it was revenge for his subordinate, and he just did an imitation of his kick. And then with admiration, all the fighters realized that they had expected nothing less from their captain. But at the last moment, Kong Hui managed to block the attack. 
And then looking over at him, Jibong asked how he was feeling because he had hit him quite hard. Jibong then went on the attack and demanded that Kong Wai confess who he really was and who sent him because he wanted to end these games. But Kong Wai calmly informed that it was a secret then attacked Jibong, forcing him to fly away. And then Jibong realized that it was the first time he had ever been sent flying. Kong Hui reported that he was apparently really very surprised by this development and also began to attack using his forces. Jibong was really shocked because he didn't expect such a thing, but he still managed to deflect the attack at the last moment, not realizing if it was some kind of magic. But Jibong realized that it was obviously different and landed asking Kong Hui, was it really energy? Kong Hui admitted that it was something similar, and he almost guessed and attacked again. After that, he started attacking, pelting the opponent with that energy. And that's when everyone around him realized that even though they thought this guy was strong, they didn't expect him to be this strong. And Kong Hui only smilingly looked back at the smoke that his attack had raised and realized that he had most likely won. But coming out of that smoke, Ji Bong, with his clothes completely torn off, stated that he was still alive and also heard him perfectly well, which made Kong Hui admired and thought Ji Bong was a pretty resilient guy. Besides, he even looked whole now. But a disgruntled Ji Bong noticed that Kong Wai must have been blind because all of his clothes were torn. After that, he grudgingly asked if Kong Wai had shown all of his abilities, or if he was capable of something else. That I'm warming up my hands and suggesting that he play more seriously now. But at that moment, I realized that Kong Hui capitulated, because he had already done everything he could and happily reported that Ji Bong was indeed very strong, even stronger, than he had originally expected. After which Kong Wai remarked that Han Ji Woon should have kept him on the team since he won and Kong Wai hoped that Ji Bong agreed. But Ji Bong only grudgingly remarked that he wasn't done yet, then hit Kong Wai and sent him flying and calmly notices that Kong Wai could unpack his stuff, since he's staying in this place as the youngest member of the team. And then all the people were shocked, looking around at Kong Kui and couldn't believe that he was younger than each of them. The news reported that there was a rift that was called the Fire Dragon's Lair. Its class was 8, and it was the highest level of rift in existence. In fact, over the last 10 years, there have been a lot of theories surrounding the rifts, but there is one that all the experts agree on. After all, whether there are fire dragons will open their eyes. South Korea will be in a critical position like it hasn't been in a very long time, but Park Tae Rim laughingly killed a baby dragon, and eventually the dragon woke up because of such insolence. So the people were in for a real disaster. About 10 minutes before the dragon awakened, the headmistress looked over the cub and realized that even if it was still small, it was a fire dragon anyway. But disgruntled Park Tyrum demanded that the director explain his plan and how they were supposed to lure Jibong. He explained that it was very simple, because all they had to do first was kill the baby dragon and awaken the fire dragon itself. And when it turns out that the dragon has awakened the government to save some time, we'll send a special forces unit. Namely, the RIF cleanup team of Captain Jibong. But the disgruntled Park Tyrum didn't understand what they would do with the angry lizard afterward, because if they dealt with Jibong, they definitely wouldn't be able to handle the dragon. But the director explained that that was the main part of their plan. They would seal it with one thing, then took out a balloon, and then immediately realized that it was a day stone. The director explained that Saudi Arabia had already finished experimenting with this stone. So, if they used the orb, they could put the fire dragon back to sleep. In the end, so the guy was given the order so he easily killed the baby dragon, then laughing said that he really liked the idea. And when the dragon awakened, everyone expected Ji Bong and his team to come here. At that time, children were playing peacefully on the playground, and then the boy noticed the sky and explained to his teacher that there was something strange there. And then she noticed that the whole sky was red. Troops with heavy artillery were already on their way to that location. The news reported that the sky turning red was a serious problem and was not a drill. All citizens should evacuate immediately to the nearest underground bunkers as directed by the guide. By then, the government had already ordered martial law. And then everyone around felt the same confusion as 10 years ago. But in the reporter's studio was a doctoral student from Seoul National University who studies the mystery of the rifts. Therefore, the doctor was asked what the current status was regarding the faults. He explained that he could state with certainty that a real disaster had started and another country had a similar case. 
and the government of that country refused to clean up the rift and barely managed to seal the monster by dropping nukes in colossal numbers. It was possible because a similar situation occurred in Siberia, where people did not live. However, in their situation, such a situation was unrealistic. And as a result, by this point, South Korea was in as much chaos as it was 10 years ago. And then fly to that place Kuzin Ran understood the seriousness of the situation and ordered to contact the National Intelligence Agency right now and ask them where the S. Guild was now and demanded to be connected to the president of South Korea. As it turned out, the president had been successfully evacuated to underground bunkers, so all authority was given to the prime minister. And then the disgruntled girl realized that such an act clearly meant a death sentence for the president. But they were already starting to approach the target with about three kilometers to go before the fault. And then Prime Minister Kusan Ran ordered that urgent announcement be given to the commanders of each guild. They were now urgently to summon all players whose level exceeded 100. At this point, Jibong and his team had already appeared there. And then all the team members noticed that they began to tremble with fear from such a powerful aura. But they knew what their goal was. But they had to pay for that goal with their lives to save time. They've been sent on a deadly mission. The government has gathered players above level 100. Their job is to survive as long as possible. But Kong Hui didn't seem to care at all. He was only happy to see the dragon because it was so huge. The vice captain looked at him unhappily and wondered what they had to do with Kong Hui and didn't know why Ji Bong had brought him here since it was an emergency, but he was still not officially on their payroll. But Ji Bong calmly reports that they may have kept him and thought that maybe he might even be of some use. Then ordered all his men to go inside and so they were inside the barrier, but the rest of the soldiers were immediately pushed back out and only Ji Bong and Kong Hui were able to get in. Ji Bong immediately noticed that his team had failed to pass and this was the first time this had happened to him. Apparently, the 8th grade rift had always been like this, but he felt like something was wrong here. After all, even he would have a hard time destroying everything in this place. After he looked back at Kong Kui, I don't understand how he could even go there, but calmly suggested that they follow on. At that moment, they started to be attacked and turning around. Ji Bong didn't realize what kind of strange feeling he had. But at that moment, Park Tae Rim's face appeared right in front of his face and called out Ji Bong and started attacking him. Ji Bong then realized that this guy was much faster compared to everyone he had met before, but he activated the physical strengthening skill and activated his awaken mode. Park Tae Rim's attack was blocked with a counter punch, but Park Tae Rim seriously wounded half of his body and as a result, his physical defense was disabled due to this attack. As Chai Yun Yubin looked around, he realized that the real war had already begun and that the fire dragon had indeed awakened. Bin's official rank was 4. He then took out his phone to call the emergency team. At this time, one of the girls held her stream and explained with a smile that she wanted to do a live broadcast outside her home. It was Yuna Fi and her official rank 99. She happily showed the people the red sky, as well as the rift, informing them that the sky was indeed beautiful, but also frightening. And apparently, someone had actually tried to awaken the fire dragon. But the next moment, she received an emergency call and then she grudgingly realized that in all likelihood, she would have to take part in it. Two more guys with an official rank of 44 and girls with ranks of 68 and 32 also received similar ones. At this moment, Ji Bong looking around himself was really shocked, because he was able to be injured and even more so seriously in the waking mode. Moreover, for whatever unknown reason, the physical security was triggered. But looking over it, Park Tyreem stated that he was too bored with Ji Bong, because Park Tyreem expected more from him and was disappointed. But Ji Bong immediately noticed Park Tyreem's tattoo on his body, which meant that he belonged to the Shield Guild. In fact, it was not the best time for such a meeting, because now the most important thing was to contain the Fire Dragon. So Ji Bong calmly turned around and asked Park Tyreem to leave, because he didn't have time to have fun with that guy. But he made another attack on the ground and raised a mountain of rocks and dust, telling Ji Bong to forget about the dragon since Ji Bong was going to die anyway. Ji Bong took off his hindering uniform and ordered Park Tyreem to attack first in such a case, and he happily took advantage of the situation. But in the next moment, Ji Bong activated a part of his power and headed towards that guy, hitting him with a blow of immense strength, 
but it was ineffective because Park Tyreem continued to stand. Watching all of this from the sidelines was the headmaster, who only laughed, happily realizing that his plan had actually worked. And the rest of the looking at the Rift team didn't know what to do, since they couldn't just stand there and watch. But by this point, Prime Minister Ku Sanran and her guards showed up and didn't understand where Jibong was now and why they had separated. Han Jiwoon then explained that because of the Fire Dragon's protection, they couldn't get in. Ku San Ran calmly said that this barrier was not the work of the Fire Dragon at all, and realized that it was all a Shield Guild prank, and they had come here to kill Jibong. And turning around, the Prime Minister noticed the paparazzi and journalists who were trying to find out what was going on and demanded that her security guards immediately remove any reporters who might have gotten in the way. But the guy explained that they couldn't do that because not only Korean TV channels, but also foreign TV channels had introduced their airwaves. Kuzan Ran realized that she had no influence on them and didn't know what to do. At this moment, a battle was already going on between Jibong and Park Tai Rum, and Park Tai Rum was clearly superior to his opponent. The director understood what that was about. After all, Park Tai Rum had the strongest weapon that Park Tai Rum had gotten his hands on in the raid on the 7th grade rift. Although it looked big, it was as light as a feather and so sharp that it could cut through metal, and there were rumors that it was even more powerful. There was a great deal of magic and mystery embedded in the dragon's tooth, and perhaps the most famous of these is reflection. Because the damage inflicted by the dragon tooth is reflected on the attacker, and when the system reported it to Jibong, he realized that in that case he had wounded himself and disabled his physical defenses, it wasn't a bad weapon. But Park Tyrum only got angrier looking at Jibong, who was talking about something like that before he died and launched an attack, ordering Jibong to die. But despite the wounds that Jibong had inflicted, he calmly asked that Park Tyrum give this sword to him, or better yet, give this sword to his repaired ones. But Park Tyrum shocked. Looking at Jibong didn't understand how he was still alive if he had spilled so much blood. But he explained that he had a lot of blood unlike the others. And that was true because his health reserve at the moment was another 900 million. But at that moment, angry Park Tyrim started attacking again, ordering Jibong to stop talking like an idiot. But Jibong calmly noticed that it was Park Tyrim who was the idiot now. Subs then Jibong attacked, putting a huge wash into this punch, and the power was so huge that Park Tyrim was scared. But all that attack was reflected back to Jibong, and new wounds appeared on his body. The system again explained that all the damage was reflected back to him, and then shaking with fear and looking around at the ground around them, Park Tae Rim couldn't believe that such destruction was done by a guy with his bare hands. But Jibong calmly remarked that he basically just wanted to test a theory, and he was right. He asked Park Tae Rim how long he would be able to hold off his blows. By this point, his health was 800 million units. So that's it guys, if you want more. Then like and comment. And subscribe to our Manhua Ghost YouTube channel for more quality full content. We create every Manhua recap video after searching a good Manhua. I also upscale all photo to show you guys high quality image. Other side script writing is a headache. So, guys, there is too much effort to create a Manhua video. So please guys support me. Thank you.